Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at colouring brushes with gradients in Adobe Illustrator and they don't all colour the same way. We have five different brush types, colour graphic, art, scatter, bristle and pattern. I've already applied these to a series of lines. I also have a circle here so we can get an idea as to how filled shapes work with gradients which is obviously going to be different to brushes. I already have some gradients in my swatches panel so I've just applied one of those gradients to this shape and then if I click on my gradient panel of course you can get to these panels by choosing window and then gradient you'll see that there are different types of gradients here and I can also change the angle of the gradient. I could also use the gradient tool over here and just drag to create whatever sort of gradient I want at whatever angle because this is just a linear gradient that I have here. So that's basically how you apply gradients to filled shapes but we're talking about brushes here. So I have a color graphic brush here. You can see it's got a black stroke on it. This is my gradient. If I click on it the gradient is being applied to that line. I can change the angle very easily. The default is zero so it goes from one side of the gradient to the other. Obviously our gradient is going from light to dark but we can change its angle for example to 180 degrees have it go the other way. So color graphic brushes are really simple to apply gradients to so too are bristle brushes. Let's just go with the bristle brush let's click on a gradient and we've got the same thing happening here. It's just that this brush is a little bit transparent so it's a little bit lighter but it's going to work exactly the same way and of course we could set the angle to zero and we've got it going from dark to light. So nothing curious, nothing unusual about bristle and calligraphic brushes. Art brushes where things start to get interesting. I've got this decorative border, it's a built-in one in Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to click to apply our gradient and nothing is happening. So let's just go back to our black line. For us to be able to apply a gradient to this we're going to need to use this brush as a mask. Now that might be a bit confusing to you but I promise you it's going to be relatively easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this brush stroke and we're going to copy it. Edit, copy and we're going to choose edit, paste in place. So that means that there's two copies of this brush, one on top of the other. Let's go to the layers palette, let's just select these two so we can see where they are. Here's one down here and here's one up the top. Well I'm just going to bring them up so that they're underneath each other. Just be a little bit easier to manage. Now this top one I'm going to ignore right now. It's the bottom one, the one underneath that we're going to actually work with. And we're going to do that with the appearance panel. So I'm just going to click here on the appearance panel. Now this one I'm going to remove the text divider from. So I'm just going to come up here and just make it a basic brush stroke. And then I'm going to apply my gradient to it, whatever gradient I want to use. And I need to make it wider so basically what I need to do is to expand this stroke behind the brush so that I can cover it up entirely. So I want this stroke to go the full length of the brush. Now if it's cut off at the ends what you'll do is go to the stroke option here. You can also get to it here and you're just going to click this option, the projecting cap. That just takes it out a little bit further so make sure that your gradient extends beyond the edge of the brush itself. So now what we're going to do is select both of these and we're going to window and then transparency. In the transparency panel it's really easy. You're just going to click make mask and then you're going to work around these two boxes to see what gives you the best result. Now disabling clip is obviously not what we want because we're not getting that divider in a gradient form. So we need to enable clip but invert mask and not invert mask might give you different results. So you just need to work out what's going to give you the best result. Now before you exit the transparency panel it's really important that you click back on this shape here so that you're back in regular editing mode. If you want to change the way that your gradient looks or change the gradient we're going to the appearance panel. Here is the gradient so I'm just going to select a different gradient. You can see that this gradient is now being applied to my shape. Here's another gradient here. So it's easy enough to change the gradient. The shape itself is buried in that transparency so if you ever wanted to change the divider 
you're going to need to select this shape. And in the layers panel, it's just a single shape. You can see it here, but it does have this little set of dots underneath the path telling you that there's something unusual about it. And the unusual about it is that there is a transparency mask here. So we're going to the transparency panel. If we needed to change the divider itself, we're going to click on it here. And now if we go to the appearance panel, you can see that the appearance panel is talking about the divider, not the gradient. So that is a little bit tricky, but that's the only thing that's tricky about it. So let's go back to our brush and we can just click away. Same thing's going to happen here on the scatter brush. You can see that the gradient's been applied, not working at all. So we're going to do simply an edit copy and an edit paste in place so the brushes are on top of each other. Let's go to the layers panel, just check where our brushes are, rearrange them so they're on top of each other, just makes life a little bit easier. We're not worried about the stars, that's the top one. We're going to make that the stars. It's this one we want to edit here. We're going to the appearance panel. We want to turn off our brush, so we just want it to be a solid line. Open the stroke panel. We can change the weight of the line here or up here. It doesn't really matter, exactly the same thing. Let's wind it up so it's large enough to cover the whole of our scatter brush. You can see here it's missing at this end, so that's where we will need to make sure that we have the projecting cap so that it is properly covering everything. It's not quite got that last star. So let's just go to layers panel with it selected. I'm just going to nudge it. So I'm just going to nudge it over a little bit. Doesn't matter that I'm moving it just a few pixels, but I do want the gradient to extend completely underneath this scatter brush. Everything looks fine here now. Select everything, go to transparency, exactly as we did before. Click make mask and then work out what's going to give us the best results invert on or off. So I'm going to get a slightly different result with invert on or invert off. And so you're just going to make a choice as to what you want and then click back on the brush to finish. Now in the appearance, you can see that this brush is not very dark. So it would be possible for us to take this stroke and make a duplicate of it. Let me just show you here. So what I'm going to do is take this stroke here and I'm going to drop it onto the plus symbol. So we've got two versions of it and I'm going to set its opacity here, the blend mode to multiply. And what that does is it makes it darker. You can see it's darkening a little bit and you could do it again. You can see that the blend mode is just copied because we copied that same layer. So we're getting a sort of darker version of this gradient. But of course, if you need to change the gradient, you're going to have to come in here and change the gradient on every single one of these strokes because they're all contributing to it. So just be aware of that. But it is possible to make it a little bit darker if you want it to be darker. And let me just reset my panels before we hit the pattern brush. And when I select over the pattern brush and try to apply a gradient to it, not surprisingly, it doesn't work either. So we're gonna do the same thing, copy the gradient and then paste it back on top of itself. Have a look in the layers panel and see where these two layers are. One's at the top and one's down here. So let's just drag this one up. We're going to focus on the bottom one of the two because that's where we're going to put our color appearance panel. We're going to change the pattern brush to just a regular basic brush. We're going to increase the stroke weight until we cover the whole of that pattern brush. If necessary, we're going to add the ends to it. If we go a bit extra, it doesn't really matter. We're going to use our gradient fill. Let's choose this gradient this time. And then we're going to select over both shapes because we need both shapes to be selected before we can do our transparency mask. Click Make Mask and work out whether invert or not inverting is going to give us the best result in these circumstances. Of course, before leaving the transparency panel, we just want to click back on the line now, if we want the gradient to go another way, that's really easy. We're just going into the appearance panel. We're going to select our gradient and we'll just 
adjust the angle of it. So in this case I'm doing a 90 degree. Now the results might be a bit different on these pattern brushes and scatter brushes and art brushes if you're not using a straight line. But here this pattern brush was a straight line so I am able to colour it in a perhaps more interesting and more appropriate way for this particular pattern brush. So there is the five brush types in Adobe Illustrator and how you're going to be able to apply gradients to these lines in Illustrator. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.